Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Prime Comments. And before we get into your comments today, we have some good stuff here. I want to mention that we have relaunched our NintendoPrime.net website. And I say relaunch kind of loosely. We're actually working on uh, some new stuff behind the scenes. Uh, to really bring Nintendo Prime to life, but Nintendo Prime to that is back. There will be new stories there, like this story we have. Uh, Did you know gaming? Uh, how they released a new video today, uh, talking about unknown things about Nintendo GameCube. These are the kind of stories you can expect to find at NintendoPrime.net that we're just not going to be talking about here on YouTube. YouTube, we aren't going to post like ten videos a day. Uh, we're going to probably you know, increase our production up to two to three videos per day. But, yeah, Nintendo Prime, that's where we're going to have all the Nintendo news, including stuff we talk about here. Uh, it's also the home of our forums, I think, at forums.nintendoprime.net, or you can go to nintendoprime.net and click on forums. Uh, but, yeah, and I have a post uh, talking about all the plans I have for Nintendo Prime beyond YouTube, uh, and I'll have a link to that down in the description for you guys to check out. But, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about this direction for Nintendo Prime. Uh, you're going to be seeing a lot of content coming out of Nintendo Prime now, both at YouTube, the website, Patreon, uh, and, yeah, on our forums. I'm really pushing things through here, uh, and I'm hoping by the end of the year we're talking about this really bright future for Nintendo Prime in 2018. But whatever, let's get right into Prime comments. We have so much to talk about this week. I think i got 12 different comments to go through. Let's just hop right into it as fast as we can, rapid fire. Um, first thing we're going to talk about is uh, the podcast this past week. We had... Two episodes of a podcast, or two parts of a podcast, go up instead of a full podcast. And most of the comments were generally dealing with uh, my treatment of Eric and cutting him off. And we just reached our stretch goal on Patreon for this past week. So that podcast was recorded before the stretch goal. And I w I'm noting that because we have a new podcast coming out this week that I think you guys are going to love. We have a special guest on, uh, which I'm really excited to, to bring to you guys. And I'm hoping that you agree that the podcast, now that we've reached our goal, has changed. I'm getting better uh, than I'm maybe talking more directly into the microphone. That's something I'm working on. Although, I noticed this week my audio is a little low, so I'm going to have to adjust that on the mixer over here uh, for next time. But, yeah, it's uh, definitely something that I am personally excited about, the direction of the podcast. And I apologize if it felt like I was rude. Eric doesn't think I'm being rude or anything. He's my best buddy. He knows the deal. Um... He doesn't, in the past, some early podcasts, when I tried to let him talk, he didn't really have anything to say, so I really had to carry the podcast, but now he has gotten more into the flow and paid a lot more attention to Nintendo, and uh, has a Switch and is all involved in that stuff. He's got more to say, and I have to do a better job of letting him do it. Thanks for your feedback. Now let's move on. <laughs> uh, so the first video with your comments is, uh, Nintendo is defeating the SNES Classic Scalpers by meeting demand. Uh, as always, links to every every topic we bring up is in the description below. Uh, Noah Cape had this to say, Just checking in to say last night I checked Brick Seek and my local Walmart showed is having 22. I drove up, went in, and 15 minutes later walked out with my SNES Classic. Never got an NES Classic, so I'm very pleased with the supply on this one. Good luck, guys. And that's really the general gist of it is that a lot of people are like, oh, but it was still sold out. It was still of course it was still sold out. It's a brand new piece of technology. Like any brand new piece of tech, it's sold out. Almost every brand new piece of tech that anyone cares to own is sold out day one. Um, my local GameStop has already gotten a restock. In fact, if I had the money again yesterday, I could have walked in and bought one. Uh, and I understand that obviously supply is different in different areas. There are people that said, oh, I was in a town of 40,000 people and I only had 22 units available at each different retail store. Do you remember how many units were available at the NES Classic at each one of those retail stores at launch? Guarantee you it was less than 22, especially since most of those retail stores also took pre-orders. So what you have to remember is you have to keep it all in perspective, right? And perspective is that the supply, Nintendo's uh, statement that they would increase supply was correct. And again, a lot of these retail stores should be in the next two weeks getting restocks, which is a month and a half quicker than the NES Classic got restocked. We have to keep that in mind as well. So yeah, let's let's wait till the restocks hit, but I'm very confident Nintendo delivered on their launch promise, and I am guaranteeing you right now they're gonna deliver on their promise of having plenty of these units available this holiday. Patience, people, patience. Uh, and this is just a prime example of someone who had a hard time getting the NES Classic day one, but was able to walk in and there was a lot more units available than there were of the NES Classic. So moving on. Uh, another video from this past week, FIFA 18 Switch hits uh, sales hit 1% of total FIFA sales in UK during launch week. I had some hot take opinions on that, uh, which some people kind of didn't agree with. 
So, Cookie Cook Game said this to say, except it's sold out for Switch on Amazon and Game in the UK, which means it must have reached their expectations. Surely, also was the number one selling Switch game in the UK. Also, the Switch in the UK has nowhere near the install base of the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. It's reaching number one in the Switch chart. Should be enough. It's about a touch rate at this point. Now, raw numbers. Seriously, considering this top the Switch physical chart and got the number two in the eShop in the UK, it's doing okay considering the numbers of actual Switches out there. You've made yourself look like an idiot by not doing your research first. To that I say, it is correct that I didn't do uh, enough research on this one. Uh, it doesn't change my stance. Until I get concrete sales numbers and we get uh, EA committing more games, uh, I'm going to stand by what I said because we have to remember that EA has a history of treating uh, Nintendo poorly. And essentially for FIFA, you know, my, my bold statement was that FIFA's a flop. Uh, we'll know if FIFA's a flop. Regardless, like I, I even mentioned in the comments more, if it sells over a million units, I'm happy. But it's not about if I'm happy. It's about if EA is happy. So we'll know if FIFA was a flop, if EA announces more games for Switch. If they don't announce more games for Switch, then FIFA was clearly a flop. So we should know as soon as, I don't know, heck, bare minimum, we would know if they announce a new FIFA for next year for Switch, which, again, we probably wouldn't find out until closer to E3. So, yeah, um, I don't know what else to say to that. Uh, the, the FIFA situation in the UK seems to be really weird, uh, in terms of, like, no physical copies being available, that's really going to hinder things. Obviously, there's been supply constraints with Switch itself, and it's the first year. But again, uh, EA is going to be the one that ultimately determines if it was a flop or not. Uh, not me, not you, not anybody else. I happen to think it's going to be a flop, but I want to be wrong. I said this in many comments. I want to be wrong. I don't want to be right. I want FIFA to be a success regardless of my criticisms so we get more of the titles from EA. And I know a lot of people have this feeling, oh, we don't need EA games. I disagree. EA has a lot of high quality games. Just because they've screwed up some games doesn't mean all their games are messed up and I want their content. Moving on. Uh, another video from this past week. A seven year old spazzes out over to the Nintendo Switch as his dreams come true. I know there's some people that took, uh, took issue with my word spaz because in some countries uh, that word has a very negative connotation. And even one of the definitions in the United States has a negative connotation. But to me, spaz, uh, growing up and just culturally where I'm from in the United States, spazzing out is akin to freaking out. And I probably should have put freaking out. But then freaking out also can have some negative connotations, although it's more commonly used. So I don't know. It's kind of this weird thing up in the air. But uh, in general, it's just he was extremely excited and I needed a way to summarize that in one word. So... Let's uh, look at what the, the comment on this one was. And this comes from Pika Plays HD. Uh, people need to leave the kid alone. He's a child. Of course he's going to get excited. I think it's great that he gets to experience something wonderful like this. And he's clearly grateful. He loves it. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Are people not allowed nice things now? The negative reaction actually baffles me. And it wasn't a negative reaction on our video. This was a negative reaction uh, from some of the other places that I found this video at. And uh, some people like judging like the kid shouldn't be spazzing out, the kid shouldn't be, parents should be slapping that kid around, uh, making him stop acting that way, acting that way is inappropriate, uh, kid's materialistic, blah, 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 blah. And honestly, uh, I'm a parent, so obviously I, I feel like I have a right to give advice to other parents, but I don't have a right to tell parents how to raise their kids. Uh, I'm only going to give parents advice if they want advice. And in this case, I'm just going to tell people who think they know better to stop it. You know, I almost thought about saying, uh, he who, uh, <laughs> he who has no sin cast the first stone, but I don't think what the kid is, did it was sinful in the first place. Uh, I don't think what those parents did was wrong. Uh, I am extremely excited that kid got excited. Uh, we all should be excited. And I think it is shameful that people, uh, judge that kid based on a single video. He's a kid being a kid. Uh, and I understand that not all kids are as privileged as that kid to be able to live in a nice home, to have nice things like a Nintendo Switch, uh, to have even a mother and a father and a sister. I understand that not everyone is in that situation, but we shouldn't be uh, punishing a kid because of the situation you grew up with and the things you experienced with life. Uh, that's the kind of situation I hope I find my children in all the time. I hope my kids uh, freak out and get really excited about things they get and are appreciative of it because... Not everyone can have those things. Uh, and I try to instill that in my children that just because you have this really nice thing doesn't mean everyone's going to get it. So, moving forward. 
another video from our past week, uh, was Square Enix manager arrested for stealing and selling 3DS units. And I noted that I wish this was fake. I still wish this was fake. Uh, and Gavin Rogerson had this to say, the guy's a hustler. What can you say? The risk is part of the high, unfortunately, sometimes. Um, and I, I actually agree with that comment that I think uh, part of the reason he did it wasn't so much he needed the money, but because uh, it was exciting for him to get away with it. And I can relate to this, and this isn't a story I've really told hardly anyone. Uh, it's not something you generally want employers to find out about. Uh, but when I was younger, and when I'm saying younger, I was 18. Uh, I'm 31 now, so I'm, I'm a lot older. But when I was 18, uh, I worked at Kmart, a local Kmart, and it's no longer open. Uh, but I stole from them. I stole several things from them. I eventually got caught. Um, interestingly enough, uh, I got the, the th item I got caught stealing was a Nintendo DS. No, I did not need the Nintendo DS. I already owned a legal Nintendo DS. Um, but I wasn't doing it because I needed the items. Uh, in fact, everything I stole was in the trunk of my car. So when they caught me, they only knew of like a handful of things I had stolen. And obviously the DS uh, was the most valuable thing I stole. Uh, but literally, uh, I instantly confessed to everything I had taken and literally handed it. It was all still not even out of its packaging. All in my trunk. I gave it all back. Um... And because I gave it all back and because I confessed to all the stuff that they didn't even have evidence for, um, and my mom obviously crying a lot about it, it got expunged off my record. So employers can't look it up, although now if they watch this video, they're going to know that it happened. No, I regret it. Um, I was depressed at the time, and it's not an excuse because we all we all have high emotions in our teenage years, and my girlfriend of five years had left me, and I had no direction in my life, and blah, 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 blah. So I stole as a means to be excited. Nothing was getting me excited. Video games weren't even getting me excited, but stealing and getting away with it was. And once I got caught, it's not just you know that it was wrong because I got caught. It, it would have been wrong even after the fact. If I had never gotten caught for it, I'm probably would have. I, I was. I was the. I'm the kind of person that even if I would have never got caught, as soon as I would have left that job and moved on in life, I would have turned around and probably confessed anyways and handed all the items back, hoping they didn't get the police involved. But if they did, it is what it is. I deserve the punishment. So yeah, it's. Uh, I understand that high. I get it. I don't know where he was in his life to do that. Obviously, for me, I was a young man. Uh, he's an older gentleman doing it, so I don't know what could have prompted that excitement. But I get it. I understand it. Um, I hope he learns from it, and I hope all of you guys learn from my experience too. Just because I had some thrill from it, it wasn't worth it. The, the fines I had to pay, and the stress I put my family through, the stress I put myself through, and the fact that I lost my job, when at the time, I really needed that job. So, yeah. Moving on. And obviously, uh, it, it could have never got expunged off my record, which would have prevented me from, uh, from getting better jobs. Moving on. Uh... We did an unboxing this week, uh, how to not put together the link Breath of the Wild and Android. Uh, I don't do a lot of unboxings, but this felt like the kind of item that should be unboxed. And Hyrule Gamer had this to say, I need to get me one of these that looks so cool and I would love to display them in my collection. That's really the purpose to buy it is for collector's value. It's not a toy. You don't play with it. Um... The parts themselves are actually kind of cheap, and this is kind of true of all officially licensed things. Generally, they're pretty cheap. Uh, but once you get it in the pose you want, it's really, really awesome. It could just take a lot of work. Uh, one of the hands I actually need, the, the reason I can't do any pose with a bow is one of the hands, the, the actual hand that holds the bow, um, doesn't actually stay in any of the arms. It, the the It's not even my fault. It came with this out of the box. Uh, it has no grip when you stick it in. It, it just sits there. And the moment you touch it, it just falls out. Uh, and there's, you could fix that yourself. If you want to make it permanent, uh, you can glue it in. I don't want to make it permanent. Uh, but yeah, so it's it, it, that's something to be aware of with items like this. I don't think it really devalues it per se. Um, the joy of these items are the multiple poses you can put in it, not necessarily the ability to play with it. It's great for photography, and it's great just to make it and set it on your shelf somewhere. Uh, so yeah, cool stuff. I'm glad you liked it. Moving on. Uh, another video from this past week is what if instead of releasing the Wii, Nintendo went third party, uh, a continuation of our what if series. And Raymond Bra had this to say, one flaw, people arguing over best console equal console wars equal annoying bickering, then arguing over games equal game wars equal annoying bickering. You can't win, people will complain and get salty about anything and everything. Gaming is for all ages 
Every year, a bunch of nine-year-olds get their first console and complain online. It will never end. <sighs> How to address this? There's obviously kids that are going to complain and overreact. I think a lot of the overreactions you see online, you'll find, are surprisingly from people that are older than you think. Uh, I think a lot of people grow up um, n kind of immature, and that's really a youth thing, right? Uh, it's not just like a nine-year-old. There are teenagers, 16, 17, 18-year-olds that are really immature, and there are some that are really mature as well. Uh, and that doesn't necessarily mean parenting was bad. Just we all go through different way, different you know forms in our life, and we ebb and flow. And my kids now have to grow up uh, during the social media and internet age. When I was a teenager, when like Facebook came out, and Facebook was college exclusive then, so I had to wait till I got accepted to a college to even use it. Nowadays, they're going to be on Facebook, you know, as soon as they realize how to trick the age thing and make an account. Uh, same same is going to be true with with YouTube and everything else out there. Uh, and thankfully, because of what I do for a living, I'm highly in tune with that side of things. I'm not a parent that's out of touch with all that stuff, uh, which is awesome. But yeah, I, I don't know. Kids are going to be kids. People are going to complain. Console wars and game wars are always going to exist. I mean, I still remember a whole bunch of people arguing back and forth about Horizon Zero Dawn, crapping all over the Breath of the Wild, and Breath of the Wild crapping all over Horizon Zero Dawn. Reality is they're both fantastic games. We, you know, that the only reason people are even debating that stuff is because one's exclusive to Nintendo, one's exclusive to Sony, and it all boils down to console wars and people wanting to justify the purchase of their consoles. Guess what? You don't need to justify the purchase of your console to anyone but yourself as long as you're happy with your system and the games you're playing on it. It doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. That's what I always tell everyone. Whether or not you love PC, PlayStation, Xbox, uh, Ouya even, uh, Switch, 3DS, Wii U, it does not matter what matters is that you enjoy the system you have. If you don't enjoy it and you feel like you need to go on the internet and try to justify it, um, then you probably don't enjoy it. And you probably should uh, be looking at other spectrums. Or maybe you don't even enjoy gaming as much anymore. I don't know. I can't, I'm not you. I can't tell you how you feel. But uh, don't tell other people um, what they should and shouldn't enjoy. You know what I mean? I mean, let them read reviews and stuff. Don't uh, go around saying they're wrong because they like something more than something else or whatever. Let them have their opinions. Opinions are okay. All right, moving on. Uh, the next video from this past week is Nintendo Switch is going to win holiday 2017. It was a hot take. Uh, I have no you know, proof that's going to happen. And PC Game Boy had this to say, a very interesting comment. Uh, loving the Switch. I am a PC gamer primarily, and I honestly have looked at my Steam library of 500 plus games, then I look at my Switch and grab my Switch to play something. Not saying my PC isn't superior in many ways, it is, but the Switch really has a lot of games that have been getting my attention and currently playing Golf Story as I listen to this video. The game is driving me crazy because I am terrible at golf games, but it's still really fun, and I keep coming back to it. I just beat Steam World Dig 2 on it a few days ago. Indie games have always been on my PC, but now I have decided to get them on my Switch because they play just as good as my PC, but I can play them anywhere. I mean, it's a given. Add in all the exclusives, and it's just a really good console. I just haven't paid attention to the other platforms when on my PC as I have with my Switch. It has this pull on me, where I am glancing at it while on my PC playing Pug G or something. This console is really special. It is special. And I think, um, I'm, I probably have some bias here because I have a, a nice PC. Granted, it's for editing, but I can game on it as well. Um, where PC and Switch is kind of like the perfect combination. But again, there is no perfect combination of anything. It's going to matter what what's your preferred method of play, what games do you enjoy. I mean, like, as an example, I love Madden. Madden is not on Nintendo system, and it's not on PC. So by default, I have to own an Xbox or a PlayStation 4 if I would want to play Madden. Um, and there's other games I want to play as well. Tons of games on PlayStation 4 I haven't played that I want to do. Uh, there's even tons of games on Xbox One that I haven't played that I want to do. Couldn't see if these coming out, whether or not you like that game or not. I think it looks good. I played it at E3. It looks exciting. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's very interesting, uh, the effect Switch has been having on people who own other platforms, including PC. Uh, and I'm glad that you're enjoying your Switch. And it, it's not making you abandon your PC, but it's making you realize uh, that it provides something that, uh, that the platform that you enjoy doesn't. So, awesome. Moving on, 10th video or so from this past week, Nintendo Switch production has ramped up to insane levels that are due to 2 million a month, reportedly. Um, and Duty294 had this to say, Hey, can I just say I prefer the older format with gameplay instead of you, not to insult you or anything, but I don't like this way of making videos. So, yeah, um, 
for a while I was experimenting with having me on camera and doing some things because that's the direction I want to take the channel. In fact, I can tell you right now, someday in the future, some probably sometime in 2018, almost every single video uh, is going to have me on camera in some capacity as we upgrade, as we get new equipment, as we get a new camera, as I hire editors, yada, yada, yada. But until then, here's the format we're going to do moving forward so it's not confusing or as confusing anymore. All news-related videos are going to be voiceover over gameplay, so I'm going to play a game on my Switch most likely. Uh, it's always going to be a game available on a Nintendo platform, played on a Nintendo platform as well. I'm not going to download a game on 3DS on my PC and then record that. I want it to be representative of what the game is like on a Nintendo platform to Nintendo fans. So it'll be a game available on a Nintendo platform, um, and it'll just have me talking about the news over the gameplay. You guys know what it's like. It's the videos I've been doing for all year. You guys, you guys get it. That's what news videos are going to be like. Discussion videos uh, are going to typically be uh me on camera doing the more presenter style where i'm because it's my opinion i'm presenting my opinion i'll probably have some notes on a piece of paper making sure i hit some key points um try to keep it as raw as i can and i'm sorry i bumped the camera uh but yeah that's what i'm gonna do for that with the green screen and all that stuff uh our podcast is always going to be in-person video as well uh but you can definitely tell the difference between that video type of video and the discussion video and the news video i'm also going to try to note it in the thumbnails whereas like if you see a thumbnail that has me in the thumbnail that's a discussion video uh the podcast has its own kind of thumbnail and the uh, a thumbnail that doesn't have me in it will be a news video now there are exceptions to this we just did a discussion video on uh, the, the Nintendo World Championships, that wasn't news, that was a discussion-oriented video. And because that was a discussion-oriented video, but was about something that has physical video of, and I felt it was better to show video of the Nintendo World Championships than to have me on screen for that video. But again, that wasn't voiceover over gameplay, that was voiceover over the actual event we're talking about. Um, so that could still happen with discussion videos as well. Uh, as an example, if I happen to be making a discussion video about a particular game, and I happen to own that game, you're probably going to see voiceover over gameplay for that because it's more relevant than me on screen. But when it's something uh, that I'm passionately talking about that isn't necessarily uh, strictly about gameplay or something, you're going to see me, and we're going to have a good time. Uh, any other types of videos might be intermixed stuff. We'll see. Uh, everything's kind of up in the air at this point beyond uh, our standard daily video content. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you for your feedback. Um, I always take this stuff into consideration. I know there were people that love that format. So I, just so that you know, that format is going to come back sometime in the future uh, when I can more readily and easily create it at a consistent pace. Moving on. Um, EA asked why FIFA 18 on Switch doesn't allow online play with friends. Uh, they basically avoided the entire question. And uh, Z Torm Rage Hero had this to say, what a surprise! EA avoided the question. Capcom included this in Monster Hunter. Double cross, lazy, lazy EA. And I'm, I'm torn on this. In the video, I said that I kind of lay the, lay the blame more at Nintendo's feet. But obviously, there are third-party games that have uh, the ability to play with friends. It's, it's a big missing feature in FIFA 18, a big missing feature in NBA 2K18. So we could talk about lazy devs, lazy this, lazy that. The reality is none of us are behind the scenes. We're all making presumptions based on information both publicly available and maybe information we have from contacts. Like I have uh, some game developer friends I've talked to and they said that it can actually be a deterrent. But then we have people who think, oh, that's BS because these other third-party games do it and Nintendo games do it. Well, I mean, Nintendo games are kind of their own separate thing and have their own separate issues, by the way, with how they handle multiplayer. But yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting thing. And thank you for your comment. Uh... Maybe it is EA's fault entirely. I, we don't know. I, someone needs to comment on it, but no one's going to. And we're probably never going to comment on it because if EA actually responded properly, they either make Nintendo look bad, themselves look bad, or themselves and Nintendo look bad. Um, it's better to avoid the question. It's a, it's a classic Reggie way. When you ask, when you kind of trap Reggie with a question where there's a high chance his response would upset people, he just kind of avoids the question and talks around it. Um, that's what EA did. So, uh, yeah, that, that could mean something bad somewhere, or it could mean nothing. We're never going to know. Moving on. Uh, the Nintendo World Championships, the final video from this week, I, as I mentioned before, uh, reminded me why I love Nintendo. 
And try it on 64 had this to say, Nintendo World Championship 2017 was so much fun to watch. My wife and I were both glued to the TV and hope Nintendo keeps it going. I think every two years is fine as having it yearly would diminish its appeal. Jordan was amazing as the league commentator and kept things interesting between games. I never felt like there was too much talking as the game knowledge of every commentator was outstanding and on point. A very professional job by Nintendo and one of the reasons I love them and their games so much. I could see Nintendo using this as a sort of stepping stone to a bigger event. One where there is a 12 and under category as I mentioned. So yeah, um, obviously I love the Nintendo World Championships. I didn't catch all four hours of it, although... Uh, I've caught like three and a half. There's just a, a, a little period in the middle that I, I didn't catch uh, that I'm going to actually go go back and watch after I'm done with this video. Uh, but yeah, I thought they did an excellent job. It was interesting seeing a lot of people commenting on uh, on this video that uh, they didn't, uh, that they're talking too much. It's a, they, you have to understand this is a live event, right? Because it's live and because there's one stage and not multiple stages, which would suck for, like, you don't bring, bring an in-person crowd and have a stage in front, a stage on the left, stage on the right, stage behind, uh, because they are doing all, they're playing all these very, very different types of games on very, very different systems and have to have different setups uh, for doing that. And because you have different setups for that, you have to take, you have to set things up, tear things down, and you're doing all of this in a live setting. And this is what led to some of the technical difficulties they had for like a little five-minute period in there. They actually had some real legit technical difficulties that delayed uh, one of the competitions, and uh, they made that known. They didn't hide that. They mentioned they were having technical difficulties, so it wasn't like uh, you saw them stretching out the talking um, to hide that that was happening. Uh, they were very transparent with that, so everyone knew what was going on. Uh, what was nice was that, yeah, these are Nintendo Treehouse people. They, well, well, you can see from when they first appeared at E3 a few years ago to now, they have gotten better and better and better at speaking into cameras, speaking to an online audience and an in-person audience. And they've really stepped up their game. Uh, they know what they're talking about because they worked on these games. They have intimate knowledge. And while some of the stuff might seem boring and mundane, explaining how a Mario Kart works, how to drift, how to do this, we have to remember that they are they are broadcasting this to a really wide audience, including people that might not know these things about these games. So them even going over some of the basics is important. Uh, and I th felt their commentary during the matches was great. Uh, right on par with some of the best commentary I've seen watching s professional Smash Bros. tournaments and seeing some of the commentary there. I felt the commentary was great. Obviously, there wasn't like those big, uh, oh my gosh, moments. You know, the over-exciting moments. But uh, it was fun. It was fun. They were very professional about it. I think everyone there enjoyed it. Everyone that got in that tournament got the take home. Uh, sweet stuff, you know, swag, of course. It looked like everyone had a t-shirt and a really, really cool sweatshirt, which I believe if you go to the Nintendo World Store, those are actually kind of pricey. So they got they got that free swag. Uh, Nintendo paid for their trip out, and I think they paid for their hotel stay plus food. So basically, Nintendo, if you qualified for this, they basically took care of everything for you to make sure you could attend or you and your family, especially if you're a younger person. Obviously, your family would have to come with you if you're in the under-12 category. And as I said, I, I feel like they should have an under-12 and then an over-12. Or yes, over-12 you know, is, is probably going to have a larger crowd than under-12, but whatever. Uh, that way you have two Nintendo World Champions instead of throwing them together. Or you could have like an under-12 and you could have the uh, over 12, and then the ultimate champions from those can play against each other at the end, and they each can take home a trophy, and then there's like the grand ultimate trophy. Um, and then you make sure, uh, the only way that would work, obviously, is that it needs to be a game that we don't even know about. It would have to be a surprise game that no one knows how to play yet uh, to put them on an even playing field. They did that with Super Mario Odyssey, but obviously people have been able to play it. And you could kind of tell right away that there was more knowledge by one person than the other on how the mechanics worked and how they play it. But then that person, oddly enough, John Numbers, ended up losing. So, uh, yeah, it was uh, really, really interesting watching everything unfold. Um, just, just great fun. I love it. Thank you, Nintendo, so much for it. And I want to thank everyone again for tuning in to another episode of Prime Comments. And I didn't mention it much before, but I'll mention it again. You could always support us at patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime. Uh, we just got another $5 backer, which means right now, actually, uh, that person and several other people who have backed us have access to a podcast. The podcast I've talked about is coming this week with our special guest on our uh, new formatted episode. And yeah, 
uh, they're listening to it right now or have already listened to it, and you guys are only going to get it in segments throughout the week. So that's the only way right now to currently listen to the full audio podcast. So yeah, it is what it is. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'm Nathaniel Rubble Jets from Nintendo Prime. If you like the video, you know what to do. And if you dislike the video, well, I can't do anything about it. Hit that dislike button. Subscribe for more content just like this, and I will catch you guys in the next one.